So this is a Gazette article, Cedar Rapids Gazette article from January 30th, 1997. And I found it in some old stuff. And I just kind of was looking through it to see if there were any articles that were kind of interesting. And this one caught my eye because it's about the boathouses out at the Boathouse Harbor here in Cedar Rapids. And the Deviant Historian and I shot a mini documentary one time where we we actually went on location and <laughs> checked check that place out and it's probably one of my favorite collaborations that we've done because we went and we walked through that area and kind of just talked about how cool it is that we as a community have a boathouse community there at Ellis Harbor and it, like it's kind of rare because like even a lot of river towns you don't really see that yeah. you know even even for a river town it's kind of unusual to have that to have like a a, a boat a boathouse uh, harbor community like that so when i saw this article from about 25 years ago i thought it was it was kind of interesting because it's a piece of history you can kind of think of this as sort of an unofficial sequel to that uh, to that mini documentary that we shot but i'm just going to read this here and i'm going to have us kind of uh react to this article every couple of paragraphs we'll just kind of like uh, give our thoughts on it Boathouse fee decision delayed. CR Council to review comments from owners by Rick Smith, Gazette staff writer. One line from boathouse owners who hold coveted leases at Cedar Rapids Ellis Harbor doesn't seem to sail with the city council. It's the line about how boathouse owners are just like every other city taxpayer already paying property taxes for homes in Cedar Rapids. So why, the owners ask, should they face a big increase in fees to help offset city costs for services provided in their boathouses? Mayor Leach, I mean, Mayor Lee Clancy, you remember them? Yeah. At, they, what? Go ahead. Well, they, for years, the way you got on city council was pretty much a revolving door from the Chamber of Commerce. You either were on it before or you ended up there. Yeah. Corbett, I think, started there and then he ended up there after his mayorship and all of them pretty much did. Yeah. And a public hearing Wednesday assured a group of questioning boathouse owners that they, in fact, are special. Oh. Very few people, Clancy told the owners, can use the Ellis Harbor in the way that the 158 boathouse owners with harbor slips do. 158. I think they made it smaller. Like More people, they have more double lots than they do singles. They were all little shacks back then. Yeah. Boathouse residents, through rent and a, or a, quote, user fee, uh, should pay most of the city cost for upkeep at the harbor, she said. Other taxpayers, she added, should not subsidize a recreational option they largely cannot enjoy. Uh, I disagree with that. I think that everybody enjoys it. I think that it's just part of, the, part of what kind of enriches our community. When yeah. I was a kid, I used to love, we would drive back from the village inn. Uh, at the Best Western, we would drive back that way, and we had a great time just driving through that, just driving through down that kind of peninsula, yeah. and then turning around and coming back, checking out all of the chicks in bikinis, and <laughs> like, you know. It was just really a cool, unique place. Like it's, it, and what's interesting is the diversity of the architecture for those places because it really it was kind of like the tiny house movement, but before you drop in half a mil. Or like a ported Johnny with a yeah. sleeping bag. I remember noticing how how so many of them are supported by those barrels. Oh yeah, those, pretty much all. Yeah, like those barrels that that provide the buoyancy. It's just too bad that they can't. That most of them aren't self propelled. <laughs> those are the really cool ones, like the boat houses that are self propelled and that can actually go down the river. You know. Yeah. Which is one reason I I don't fully get why people would want to, you know, like have a boat house if they if it doesn't even have a motor attached to it but i still appreciate that they're there it's maybe wouldn't be a way i would want to live but i like the i like them though the way i see it is it's kind of like how you have a camper trailer or a trailer home yeah it doesn't have the moving mechanism built into it but then it doesn't have the maintenance the cost or the risk factors of that yeah it's definitely a, a different breed of people who have those um nonetheless clancy and her council colleagues agreed to table a proposed 20% increase this year on boathouse stall rates after listening to objections from 12 boathouse owners among about 20 on hand at the, at the city council meeting. 
Council members said they needed time to digest the comments. <laughs> Emphasis on digest. Digest those comments. Yeah. And they end up right in the toilet. <laughs> a delay also would give council members and Parks Commissioner Evan Hughes a chance to review the residents' input, the council said. Hughes, who has immediate oversight over matters involving the Riverfront Improvement Commission, was attending a conference Wednesday and was absent from the council meeting. Boathouse owners encouraged the council to view the harbor community as a public use area frequented in the summer by many who do not have boathouses. That's true. I was one of them. Many people fish or sunbathe along Boathouse Row. <laughs> yes, they do. I, I mentioned the girls in the bikinis. Yeah, bikini my, my dad and I used to go on the bikini patrol, uh, which would be illegal now. But uh, Oh, yeah, you'd be in jail. You'd be to your ass. Uh-huh, yeah. Among Boathouse Row, as if they owned one of the boathouses, owner Ron Teague said. Or not, Ron Tichje. 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 T-I-E-T-G-E. This is a public area, and you shouldn't try to bring income and expenses so close together, he said. Don't try to tell us, added owner Jer Jerry Copeland, that nobody else uses the park. The standard boathouse stall rate is proposed to increase from 175 to 210, a 20% increase this year. Per year? Yes, and boat storage from 30 to 100. Oh, wow. The rates have typically increased 3 to 5% in recent years. What do you suppose it is now? Yeah, I know it was six hundred a couple of years ago when we shot our video. Yeah. So it's shot way the hell up. And it's probably it's probably stepped up faster than inflation. Oh too. yeah, it's probably a thousand now. Yeah. The one boathouse owner, Dennis Benters, asked the council to raise rates more slowly until it could make a better accounting of expenses. Council members seem to acknowledge that city expenses for harbor services were estimates. Owners told the council not to compare life at Ellis Harbor with boathouse life on Coralville Lake or the Mississippi River. The Cedar River in Cedar Rapids does not have the wide-ranging benefits of the other two places, they said. Some asked the city to consider dredging the river so boats could travel to Palo and back in the summer. Now, that line, talking about dredging, remember this is 1997, a little over a decade before... Uh, a certain major historical event, a major natural disaster hit Cedar Rapids. Yeah, a little epic, a little surge. Yeah, so a little, a certain, a certain little, um, boom! <laughs> <laughs> that ain't that way around. That was really good timing. They were talking about, about dredging the river. Uh, I, I think that might have possibly been a good idea, you suppose? Yeah, I, I don't, did they ever dredge it? I don't think they did. No, not even a little bit. And now they have to build these big earthen flood walls, uh, you know, to, to, to make up for the fact that they, uh, that they didn't do what they should have done years ago and just dredge the river. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> that was a good, uh, that was good timing there. You, I agree. Uh, I'm glad that that book happened to be right there. That, that was unplanned. <laughs> yeah. You just had a collection of books laying around. Yeah. Um, uh, back Palo and back in the summer. See, that would be cool. Yeah, that, that'd be fun. Um, the proposed rate hike and other new fees would increase harbor income from thirty-seven thousand one hundred seven to forty-eight nine eighty-five. The actual operating expenses are estimated at fifty-nine thousand five hundred thirty-five for the coming season. A set of rate hikes in the set. I'm sorry, I'm still getting over that. In a second year, is proposed to bring income nearly in line with the city's annual expenses for harbor services. Rate increases, rate increases were advocated several years ago by the Efficiency and Reform Committee after a lengthy study of city finances. End of article. Huh. It, it's interesting in some ways, though, because it's like, it's a public thing, but are we in the people paying their fair share, or is that something that be subsidized, like it's some sort of museum or art piece or public park? Because it's part of a public park, but it, those facilities are really for private use, though. Yes. But they're almost like a permanent display. Yeah. It would, it would almost be like akin to having a, having a big statue. Like, oh, we can't have any of those anymore. Yeah, well, like the Statue of Liberty. Oh, okay. Which is racist, by the way. Oh, yeah. Um... 
the Statue of Liberty and, you know, taxpayers having to pay for the upkeep and maintenance of the Statue of Liberty or the Golden Gate Bridge, although the, the Golden Gate Bridge is a bridge, but a big non-functional monument. Um, you know, I kind of think of the harbor, the Boathouse Harbor, as as even though there are there are people benefiting from it at, in the sense that it's their home, they're benefiting from it more than the general public. I still almost, I think of the harbor as kind of like a, a, in a sense, a monument. Yeah. It would be like if you had the Statue of Liberty or the, the, the Gateway Arch, but there were people living in there. <laughs> you know, like if you built loft, loft apartments inside the Gateway Arch. Well, for me, it's interesting because it really symbolizes the start of the Northwest Side. And to me, it says, hey, the Northwest Side isn't that bad. And, and for that particular quadrant, the, the Northwest Side, that's probably my favorite um, neighborhood and development in that area. You know? So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I used to spend a lot of time in the Northwest Side because, again, because of Village Inn and driving through Ellis Park, A and W, the A and W. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ellis Road is really the cultural culinary hub of uh, the Northwest Side. But A and W, you had the Village Inn. I always thought of that as like Little California. That area, it was like it was like our sort of beach, beach lifestyle type area. Yeah, with less people taking shits in the street. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's nice. I never really thought about it in that particular context. It just had a different feel. Yeah, it did. It was much more leisurely and much more kind of like a park setting almost because of how close it was to the river. Because you look at the two north sides, you have northeast and southeast and northeast on that side, or sorry, northeast and northwest and northeast on that side, it's all kind of built up. There's big mansions over there, but there's no houses on the lower level. But then you go to the northwest side, and then you got some apartment buildings, a number of them, rental properties, um, the park, and then that park has a golf course and all that that just kind of circles around, you know? Yeah. And that whole park is on like a big slope. It's yeah. like it's very, um, it's very distinctive because it's basically on essentially like kind of a bluff. Um, another thing is uh, uh, that part of town was really badly hit by the derecho. Like I remember about a, you know, in the days after the derecho driving, I, I had a chance to drive down Ellis Road, and man, giant trees. Just giant trees, huh. uprooted, taking the whole yard with them. The whole yeah. root system falling right on top of, of people's houses. And I mean, you saw that pretty much all over town. But the northwest and the southwest side in particular, I think, were badly hit. Well, I think they got worse winds, but then I would also say with those areas, especially northwest, in the floodplain, um, because of that huge flooding with the epic surge, um, it weakened a lot of the facilities that were there, so it made it more prone to, you know, give you issues. Well, yeah, I mean, there were there were parts of the northwest side where it, it's, it became a rural area again. Yeah. Like it, you know, it looked, it probably looked similar to what it looked like a hundred years before <laughs> that. Pretty incredible, but. But then there's a place that has like a stairwell, like three stairs outside. It looks like it's a fortress because they put this huge ass concrete basement in mm. over there. Yeah, so. that's where Groundswell used to be. The old oh. the old Groundswell was right across from uh, from Quaker Oats in that warehouse building that's not there anymore. Yeah. But I actually really loved that location, and in some ways, I kind of wish we could have stayed there. Um, it uh, was kind of a lot of pleasant memories there. But you have the railroad bridge, which you still see. You still see uh, um, uh, trains on there occasionally. Um, it's the only active railroad bridge I think I've ever seen in my life. Really? I think so. 
Yeah. Oh, all the all the other ones I've ever seen have been exempt. Oh. Except for I don't know, is the one way over on the other like um I don't know, but uh it's one of the few at least. But Anyway, I think that pretty much wraps up uh, the the whole uh, boathouse thing. And uh, did you have anything else to add? Well, that paint, the image that I had. I guess oh, we yeah. Can we, can, uh, we can close it on that image. Uh, she took the photo, and then it's on metal, I believe. It's the boathouse. I wrote her the, this is the harbor we're talking about. I always really liked it and just found it aesthetically pleasing, and here we are. All right. Well, we salute you once again, Cedar Rapids Boathouse Harbor. That was their 50-year mark back in 97, too. I think they started in, like, 47, right after yeah. World War II. Their association yeah. was established. Let's hope for another 50. Yeah. That'll cover probably both of our lifetimes. Oh, so yeah. That, so that'll... Then after I die, I don't really give, <laughs> I don't really give a shit what happens, yeah. but... Uh, all right, thanks for watching, everyone. And if you enjoy videos about Eastern Iowa history, make sure to subscribe to Captain Unusual for more.